our society, I feel, has made the colossal error of allowing wealth to purchase the chance to make quasi-governmental decisions as a private citizen. I was not in politics at all. Um, after um, uh, having pursued a career in business, I was invited to join the party by a senior treasurer. Um, and we met and uh, he took me around CCHQ. I saw what they do and how they're trying to improve society. And um, I felt that I could make a positive contribution based on my knowledge, my competency, and my network of people, um, not only in the UK, but also around the world. So I started off um, and the treasurer asked me, he said, well, um, you know, we would like you to make a meaningful contribution because it seems that you can contribute more than money and we would like to be deeply engaged with you. So I put the question back to him, well, how much would you think that would be? Because for me, giving a small amount and doing nothing is like dumb money. Uh, I see myself as smart money that says, look, I'm happy to give money and then happy to work with the party, work with people and actually help achieve objectives. So they told me then, let's start with 200,000 pounds. This was just before the Theresa May um, election. And uh, I checked with my uh, family members and they said, fine, Mohammed, if this is what you'd like to do, go ahead. And what did you expect to get in return for that money? It's a very interesting question. So um, uh, some people go in saying, I want something. I went in saying and thinking to myself that I want to do something, something which would be of help to the party, something that would be of help to the country. That has been my motivation. It was not here to ask for favors. I'm not in business anymore. I gave that up a while back, so I wasn't interested in housing permits or COVID contracts or relationships with the Middle East or anywhere else. I was interested in leveraging whatever assets I had in helping the party and the country. I don't believe it's the case for most donors. Now that I've been part of the system, I've seen that um, there's two types of money. There's dumb money that says, okay, well, I live here. I you know, the, the country is good to me, let me do whatever I can, but then I want nothing more to do with it. So some money comes in that direction, but that's more philanthropic type money. And then there is other money that comes from business. Now for business people, the mindset is that if I'm going to be doing something, I'm going to be expecting something in return. There are no free meals as such. So then it's a question of what is the quid pro quo? Um, what are the asks? and um, how, how are those asks fulfilled? And so that, that is a challenge, it's a problem. And I think that that is where, um, you know, our society, I feel, has made the colossal error of allowing wealth to purchase the chance to make quasi-governmental decisions as a private citizen. There are also, um, it's interesting, people talk about excess, but I think excess by itself is not enough. It's excess that allows them influencing. And so the way I look at this thing now with hindsight is that there are concentric circles. When you donate a large sum of money, then you enter these ring of circles, the outer circle. And then the goal is how do you get from the outer circle to the inner circle, which is where you are able to make, um, you are able to influence outcomes. What are you most worried about when it comes to rich people giving money to the Conservative? What concerns you most about that? What are they getting that you don't think is fair? No, it's not about, so let, let's, let's break that down. I think the first question is, um, so how did they make their money and why is it that they are giving this money and what do they expect to get from it and if those reforms were to be brought in do you think some of the people currently donating to the conservative party would no longer do it so i make two points there uh, chloe one is that um, i have said this in the telegraph some time back and I think open democracy picked me up on this as well, that we need to think seriously about capping donations. If we cap donations, then in a way, the quid pro quo aspect starts to uh, fall away, to wither somewhat. And secondly, it would allow for parties to be funded on a much more broad basis, a bit like President Obama's campaign when he ran for office in, I believe, 2000. 
where you want the widest possible ownership because that is what gives your democracy legitimacy. Um, the way this, uh, so to answer your question specifically, I think that if they have to um, submit to this sort of due diligence, I suspect that not all of who donate today would donate. Will you continue to donate even if these reforms aren't brought in? Um, uh, look, um, I uh, have been disappointed because instead of this party given being given the mandate um, when Boris Johnson won the 80 seat majority to actually govern the party and the government have been mired in scandal after scandal after scandal. So I have tried to put a question to both the contenders, uh, Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak. I said, why is it that neither of your campaigns to date has focused on what I might call the clean the sleaze um, um, slogan and a promise to ensure that if you took up number 10, then A, you would clean up whatever has been going on at number 10 to a lesser degree Whitehall, but to a very large degree CCHQ. The CCHQ structure for raising money as well as for its governance is way out of date. There are so many reforms that are urgently needed there in terms of the transparency of boards, the appointment who appoints them, their decision-making power. Because end of the day, when you think about it, we are in a situation where 180,000 members of the party are basically electing a prime minister that will represent or supposed to represent the interest of 60 million people. So are you saying if the party doesn't reform, you, you wouldn't donate anymore? Um, I would find it difficult to donate. I would stay uh, on the sidelines and wait until somebody decides to shake up. And it, I think a shake up is overdue and I think it will happen. It's only a question of who has the ability and the leadership qualities to say, look, the culture has to change, the rot at the very top has to stop.